cool. Let's get this fucking thing done. Um, what's up, everybody? Uh, I guess we'll start off with this little situation going on in Minnesota. Um, don't know if you noticed, but mm, pretty big things happening over there. Yeah. Say the least. Well, what, are you, what are your thoughts on it? And, and if, keep in mind, people, sometimes we get a little serious. And the reason we do that is because we kind of want to um, record what's, like, what's going on in the moment. So that when we look back on this, we remember these times in history. Um, so that's why sometimes we go on a little serious tangent. We try to keep it light and we try to mix in some, some lighter stuff. Uh, in with the serious stuff so hopefully that doesn't turn everybody off too much but um but we'll we'll try to keep it to a minimum because after all this is a a comedy type podcast so uh but we do want to stay in tune with current events and you can't get away from from stuff like this so go ahead sorry sorry to interrupt yeah so i mean it's it's pretty fucked up um I think their reaction now has <sighs> hmm, disgraced the movement. True. But for, first off, before you keep going, um, we're, we're not going to sit here and talk about whether the cop was wrong or anything like that, because that shit is obvious. Uh, we're not, we're not going to sit here and talk about uh, justice and, and all of that stuff. We, at this point we're we're past that. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that, when, when you see the second video, when you see the other cops fucking s- basically sitting on the guy also, that they f- just completely... They murdered him. Yeah, they just went way, way... They just fucked up and are just... I, I don't know what's going on with the training of these guys, but um, but we're not going to get into that. Um, th- I mean, that if, if you've got uh, any thoughts or qualms or or any doubts about that stuff then i don't know what to tell you i don't don't know what the fuck you're looking at but whatever we'll we're gonna focus on the aftermath and the the protests and and what's been going on the past few days so with that continue yeah so i mean you know i'm i'm watching i'm watching a lot of these videos of you know just rioting all over the country um, and some of the shit's close to home because, you know, there's there's rioting in D.C. and Richmond. Um, and, like, I get it. People are angry. Shit's fucked up. But what are we accomplishing here? What are we – what is the message that we're sending out when we burn down? And not just, like, box stores, like, corporate stores, like, local businesses. Like – yeah, I mean, what, what what good are we doing? Yeah, okay, it's getting news coverage, but they're going to cover that shit anyways. They like that narrative. Well, I will say this, and I'm not defending these people in any way, so don't take it that way. You get way more news coverage if you're burning shit down than if you're doing a peaceful protest. That's just a fact. So... If you're trying to make a movement, if you're trying to start a revolution, that's kind of what you do. Like, my only problem problem with that is, is you look at like sporting events, like riots that have come out of sporting events, and how the media portrays that. You know, it's oh, they were you know overzealous. Um, You know, it was you know. You mean like when people are flipping cars and stuff and. And fucking setting fires and shit like that after sporting events, the way the media covers that is very different than how they're covering this, where they're like, you know, unlawfulness and thugs and and it's just a different portrayal by the media. Well, uh, I I don't think that the media is I don't think all of the media is portraying them as thugs. I think the far right is definitely doing that. Um, I think there's a lot more leniency coming from the far left 
in terms of that stuff. And again, as I always say, we need to look somewhere in the middle because that's where the truth lies. Um, but like, who's to say, like, there's no blueprint for, for a revolution. There's no blueprint for making change because if you think about it, if these guys did a, just a peaceful protest, would they really accomplish anything? Or would people just say, eh, eh, it'll blow over. Like, you have to, uh, uh, and I'm not saying it's okay for those assholes that were, that were on video, like, hammering at the fucking self-serve target things, trying to get the money out of it. Or, and, and not just black folks, white folks too. You see white folks running out of fucking target with like a, a, a rack of fucking clothes and shit like that. Like there, there's every, every race, every fucking color, everybody's in there doing that dumb shit. Not, not, not the peaceful ones. Those guys, you know, God bless them. There are people taking advantage of the situation. There's no doubt about that. But how do you, what's the blueprint for change there's no change unless you make it uncomfortable for people there's no change unless there's some unruliness there's no change unless the higher up see these motherfuckers are serious they ain't playing we got to step back and rethink how we handle these things we got to step back and and rethink how we're training these motherfuckers and so that this doesn't happen somewhere else so while I condemn the people who are doing it just to grab a, a, a TV for free, I also understand the anger that some of these guys have and just want to just be destructive because how many people have to die? How many, how many times have we gone through this and the same shit happens? And even when they do arrest guys, they get off. Or when guys get fired, they just go somewhere else and they get rehired by another police force. So there's this, this cycle that continues that it's the flavor of the month and then we just go back to the norm. And, and so that's why I kind of understand where some of these folks are coming from. But I also get the other side, like you're burning down your own communities. You're, you're just taking advantage of the movement just to get yourself an, a, a new free TV. So th there's a balance there, but unfortunately, if you want change, sometimes you got to force change. And this yeah. is, this is the way that they feel like is the best way to do it. Now, some would say you come up in the system you get elected for office, you make changes that way. But people don't have the patience for that. People want change now. And unfortunately, that's happening, but it's happening at a very slow pace. Like, we're seeing more diversity in, 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 our, in our government, both local and federal, but the establishment has been there so long that we haven't even scratched the surface yet. So we're not going to get a fair shake for a long time. So yeah. I think that's why people are like the, f like the right way. Fuck your right way. I'm going to fucking smash some shit up. I'm going to throw rocks at the fucking cops, which doesn't solve anything, but it brings attention. It brings a mess. It sh brings a message to the leaders that say we aren't going to tolerate this bullshit anymore. And you're going to have to deal with us. If this shit happens again, whether you yeah. like it or not, that, that's my yeah. take on. It. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I absolutely feel like I feel, I feel the pain like these people are going through, you know, I, I get it. I get it, man. It, it's shit. It's shit. And I will say, man, I, I've really seen some cool shit by, like a lot of police departments throughout the country who like the sheriffs and the, you know, the, the leadership in these police departments have stepped up and said like, you know, we stand with you. This isn't right. 
This isn't what law enforcement's about. Um, and I've even seen like in one of the counties, one of the sheriffs actually like went out there with the protesters and stood with them yeah. and like held signs. Like that's a pretty cool like example of like what needs to happen. Exactly. People need, people need to trust like people own need, need to be able to trust them. Yes. Own it. Say these guys fucked up. We don't, we don't roll like that. And, and you know, who's, who's the happiest right now? about all of this stuff going on those motherfucking da's and shit in georgia that fucked up that other case those guys are like we ain't got to worry about the fucking country right now giving us all the media coverage because or or all those people that had pending cases in indianapolis that the evidence got burnt up and now they just got a free pass (laughs) (laughs) those guys are definitely (laughs) i'm just saying (laughs) I'm saying the original DAs for that shit that, that happened when they hunted that dude down in Georgia, like those guys are like, well, we ain't got to worry about that for a while. <laughs> I'll tell you that some of the funny shit I have seen from this though. I don't know if you saw they, um, some of the rioters actually stole the train like from the mall, the little ball train, the little mall train. And Get they the were driving, they were driving it down the road. Um, <laughs> That. So it's fucking hilarious. So you see, like these fucking dudes, just like, <laughs> like pivoting, like it's a, like a caddy, <laughs> and, and then uh, they release like the zoo animals and shit like that. But the yeah, the, the train thing was hilarious. Fucking gangster lean on the tr- on the mall train. <laughs> <laughs> choo 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 choo. That's funny. That's funny. So. There are legit, um, they're legit protesters who, like, this really means something to them. But there are others, and I, I would, I guess, I would call them professional protesters. They can't wait for something to pop up. They're gonna be there no matter what the fucking what the situation is, no matter what it's about. They just love protesting. And I started to think, and I I started thinking about this a while back when when the the Democratic nominees were all doing their rallies and all of this stuff. And you see all these fucking people that go to to these events, to these speaking events, and you see all these assholes like at the Trump things and and the the Bernie things and, and, and and I'm just like with the signs, just, yay, my fucking guy with the signs and just going crazy and and i always thought what the fuck makes these people go do this stuff and it finally occurred to me these are people who don't watch sports they're not sports people they have zero interest in sports this is like when you get something that goes down like this this is like their playoffs this is like their super bowl so when you see these these big Trump rallies and you see all these people there fucking just going nuts, it's because that's that's the playoffs for them. And the same thing for, for everybody. And the same thing with these protesters. Protesters? Oh, shit. Protests going on? Let's fucking go. It's, it's a playoff, baby. Let's go. And that's how they react. Because the way they, they get into this stuff is the way I get into sports. It's the way I get into games. Like, I'm cheering like a motherfucker. I don't have signs, but I'm cheering like a motherfucking losing my mind, going crazy when when there's a, a, an important game on, at least important to me. So so that's that's their mentality. This is their big sports event. And, and, and it, it escaped me for so many years because I'm just like, like, I just couldn't put the pieces together. Why? 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 What? What do you get out of this? You you go home and you feel good about yourself. Yeah, I protest protest the fuck out of that shit today. Like, I I don't I don't understand. Like, I, yeah, I chanted the loudest, bro. You should have seen my chant. Well, and and this is and this is not to like downplay the people who are legitimately out there, like who are passionate about the cause and what's going on, um, who feel you know like impassioned about the topic. But we're talking about these stunards that are like fucking 
just looking, looking to get their, their two cents in and get involved in something that really they don't have a bone in the fight or a concern. They just like, I very much think that like, for example, like Antifa has stuck themselves in on some of these rallies, like on some of these riots and oh, these protests. Probably, but I don't want to get into all of that shit. Cause those guys are fuckheads too. Um, uh, you, you got anything else about the protests? Like I, it's, it's a heavy topic and I, I don't want to take us in that direction. Nah. I mean, stay safe. Stop, stop burning shit down guys. Cut it out. Yeah. All right. You made your point. We get it. The revolution is televised now these days, but like they arrested the guy, like they charged him. I know we need to change. Now, now start finding more constructive ways to do it. Stop fucking tearing down your neighborhoods, you fucking assholes. Go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, anything, uh, anything new on the vid? Um, I'm kind of vitted out, to be honest. Um, but I did have this thought recently. Like, you see, I'm I'm sure you've seen the Hardos with the the actual official. Um, N95 masks and those can't be easy to to get right like those were basically uh, being held for people who worked at the hospitals and stuff like that right yeah not unless you got them early on actually I have a couple of N95s all right so maybe you were ahead of the, the game <laughs> and you got but but I, I they got to be expensive right they're, they're not they're not going to cost you what a regular mask would cost you or like some homemade mask, right? Yeah. So it got me to thinking, the, the hardos that have these these N95 masks, how often like, do they change them? Because a part of me believes they wear the fuck out of those things. Like, till the straps are like loose and shit around their ears. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I know like my masks, you can like, you can bake them and reuse them um that's why i have a couple of masks so i can rotate them um but yeah <laughs> because that's the thing is a lot of people like even with those the smaller disposable ones um they're still using the same one and the whole purpose of a disposable mask is is to throw it out it's disposable yeah so so i'm i'm thinking about it and i'm just like like when I see them, I'm like, oh, that dude's got the official one, and I and I look at it because I I, I want to see if it if it's getting like that. Um, no, you know <laughs> you you know how you have a pair of white kicks, and the like if you keep them too long or you try to wash them or some shit like that, that the, the, the rubber yeah the rubber starts to turn yellow. So I'm looking at these masks to see if I'm seeing any yellow. <laughs> But because they've been wearing them too much or they're trying to wash them or whatever. Because I know some of those motherfuckers are because I know how expensive they are. I mean, they're selling at Walgreens disposable masks for, I think it was like a 50 pack for like 30 bucks or something like that. So, you know, that shit adds up. If you're using them daily, that they're gone like that. And, you know, a lot of people can't afford those types of prices. So, just say it. If you got the official ones, you might be, you might be wearing it more than you should. It's like the the dude that only has you know one pair of LeBrons. <laughs> <laughs> so he rocks the fuck out of them. The, the dude that has like um like one Gucci Gucci shirt. And he wears it like every other day. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, maybe you should have bought like five other shirts instead of spending everything on that one Gucci shirt. Throw a couple of cost in the fucking mix. I mean, for that, for those prices, you could have got some other decent shit instead of putting all your fucking money into one thing. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, one of the things I noticed about the mask thing here, like last night I went to um went to Wawa here. I don't know if they got Wawa's in Boston now. No, but but I know about them. So so I went to Wawa, and you know 
the big thing here in Virginia is like the governor mandate. You have to wear a mask in public, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I, I get done going to the store and I take the moment, you know, take my mask off in the car and I watch like this dude yelling at the building, like honking his horn. I'm like, okay, what the fuck is going on there? And apparently like it was a taxi cab driver and his like rider had went to run in the store and get some like shit or whatever and didn't have a mask. So they kind of told him like, hey, we can't serve you without a mask. But when the dude went in there, there was a dude at the register without a mask on. Hmm, interesting. So the cab driver's like, oh, it's fucking racist. And, you know, why can he be in there without a mask? And mind you, like, the dude at the register was, like, an Arabic guy. I'm like, mm, I don't kind of, yeah, you're fucking stretching there, buddy. Like, I don't, I don't get what you're saying. Um, I think it was more so that the dude was in the store. But the dude was probably behind like a, a plexiglass or, or some type he of was, thing, right? He was behind a plexiglass and like the dude was already at the register cashing out. This dude was walking in like when the when the cashier noticed he didn't have a mask on, the dude was already fucking there to cash out. Yeah. This dude walking at the like walking into the door and this dude at the cash register sees him walk in without a mask. So he says to him, Hey, you know, you need a mask. So the guy at the register, like behind him in line complains to the to the guy without no. the mask because you're confusing so, me a little bit so the cashier says to the guy that's walking in like hey you need a mask but he's got the a guy, guy in front of him without a mask yeah who's already got like it. got his shit in front of him so i'm like mm, you know i might be annoyed by that but whatever but it wasn't the dude that got at, like told he couldn't come in because he didn't have a mask he wasn't the one offended he wasn't the one mad about it it was a cab driver Who's fucking like cussing and like honking the horn? I'm like, the fuck is your deal? He didn't deny you. How the fuck you. did he know? He went out. He, was, he went in also. No, he was like sitting in his car, like, just, like me. Well, how the fuck the did he know? Because I guess the dude came out and said, "Oh, they won't like let me in because you know I don't have a mask." And he's like, "Well, the fucking guy's at the register without a mask." <laughs> so he's like honking the horn and like cussing. He's just him. trying to get a good tip. <laughs> I mean, I'd do the same thing. Like, if if I'm driving motherfuckers around and that shit, I'd be like, yeah, I'm on your side, bro. What the fuck? That's bullshit. That's bullshit. So, I guess I can understand that. Um, one of the things that I, that, that I did notice is with uh, speaking about masks is this if you're on the pro mask side then you're constantly gauging who has masks on and who doesn't and you're constantly judging them so if you just on the on the other side of the coin you have the people that are against the mask thing who are testing the limits absolutely and, absolutely and i've seen these posts where gordu was like i went to wawa today didn't wear a mask I went to da 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 and did it. Yeah, the hardos, the hardos, yeah. and I already and I already said this in a past episode. I hope every one of those motherfuckers gets the virus. I hope every thing. single one of you assholes, you fucking hero mass Costco dickheads. I hope every one of you catches the vid. Every single one. Well, the funny thing is, you know, it was all hardo till it was time to go to the ABC store. And the ABC store said, sorry, no mask, no entry. And they were like, okay. Wait, what is the ABC store? The alcohol beverage control store. Oh, of here, course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> there was a hard ass so you can't get your fucking liquor. Hell yeah. <laughs> Shit. If the, if the liquor store told me I had to wear a fucking clown costume, I'd put a clown costume in before I went in to get my beers. Are you kidding me? Shit. Get the fuck out of here with that. So, um, I don't got anything else about the virus. I mean, if you got anything, yeah. go ahead. No, moving on. Uh, big exciting news today. Yeah, I missed it. So, uh, we have actually, like, the SpaceX program has launched some astronauts into space. Now, do you know what the mission was for? 
Like, what's this mission about? Um, so they're basically like sending U.S. astronauts to the space station, um, but for like to the fix last stuff? couple of years, yeah, to like work on the space station. And for the last couple of years, the U.S. hasn't like launched astronauts from the U.S. We've had to send them over to Russia, which is kind of embarrassing. Like, we we sent our our scientists over to Russia to take like a space ride up to the space station. So now with, with private, you know, business. Oh, kind of smart, program, really. If I can hitch a ride and not, doesn't cost me anything, then. Uh, but I, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, so, like. So now with the SpaceX program, like Elon Musk, um, you know, basically now we were able to launch from Cape Canaveral and send two astronauts up there. And what's cool is, like, I don't know if you saw the spacesuits. No, I missed everything. I'm fucking pissed. I, I'm gonna look at it later, but I I I wanted to see it, um, because I don't know if you know this, but a, a, a young little Ralphie once wanted to be an astronomer, and was too fucking stupid, so it didn't happen. But um, I used to love the space and stars and all of that bullshit, so I I did want to watch it, but I completely forgot about it. Well, uh, what I thought was interesting is Musk's approach to like um, the spacesuits. Like the spacesuits are like streamlined. Remember, like growing up, it was those big, bulky like yeah. spacesuits with the big globe heads. Yeah. No, these are like stylized, like motorcycle style helmets that they're wearing now. Um, Good. Probably easier yeah. to get shit done. Well, and not only that, it's set. Like I don't want to say sexy, but. What, are you getting uh, a little chubby looking at the fucking space no, guys? No, no but like a, a a cooler a cooler image is going to sell. I got I got you a sexier space yeah. suit. I got you. Yeah, the suit um, itself, so it's, not not the dudes almost, inside. Yeah, so it's almost <laughs> like a like a James Bond fucking space suit. So that's just pretty cool. Um, it it makes sense. Movies. Yeah, um, I mean, the aircraft is is really dope. Um, he, like their aircraft was called the Falcon. You know what's going to be funny is if they start doing these more often that that in order to like help the funding because sports are shit right now and who knows if they'll get back to what they used to be you'll see like branding like companies will start getting like their, their logos on the spacesuits you got the <laughs> see a fucking Ge- Geico on one <laughs> on shoulder <laughs> You know, what? but fuck it. Good. Put branding on spacesuits, man. Like that's a fucking brilliant idea. <laughs> oh, every now and then I have one. Um, yeah, might as well get it funded. Then, then, then we're not paying for it. That'd be fucking great. Like, you, you, this space, this space gonna, launch is brought to you. This space launch is brought to you by. Coca-Cola. You're gonna see <laughs> Mercedes Benz <laughs> on the side of the fucking rocket ship. <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't know if Musk is going to allow that. You might see Tesla. <laughs> well, I mean, even he's willing to, to, to make some money. So, it, trust me, it, as long as it's it fills his pockets, he don't give a fuck, because he's still getting the contracts to make the shit. So he's good. He's well, good regardless. I think he he legitimately like launched a fucking. Tesla into space with a like robotic driver. I'll be impressed when they start doing this. Like the Virgin guy start was talking about bringing people, regular Joes up into space and shit like that. I'll, I'll be impressed when that shit starts. That's when I'll say, wow, this is getting serious. Now we're going to fucking be vacationing on Mars soon. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's pretty cool, man. Uh, it's an exciting an exciting thing for America, an exciting thing for space travel, um, especially since we, we killed the space shuttle program. So with, with the spacesuits, if, if they want to get fun with it, they're going to have like the throwbacks. <laughs> <laughs> like, like on their eighth launch, like we're launching with the throwbacks from 1999 or whatever the fuck the last... <laughs> The, the the ball cap the ball cap spacesuits. <laughs> well, the other thing was another concept suit they had actually looked like it was like Michelin Man, 
um, spacesuits. They were like tubby, like round. Yeah. <laughs> so they were like rounder the, fucking the alternate. Suits. Those would be the alternate spacesuits. <laughs> Today we're gonna rock the 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 sponsored by Michelin. We're gonna rock the Michigan <laughs> Michelin Man uh, X ones. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like it was funny because astronauts looked like they were wearing goose downs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, the wifey likes these ghost shows, right? And I do not believe in ghosts at all. So I listen, I, I listen to these things from afar. I don't watch them with her because like, I'll just piss her off because I'll just start calling out all of the bullshit that these shows do. I mean, because think about it, like regular shows that people got into like Pawn Stars and the, the one where they bid on lockers and all of that stuff. Like all of that shit was set up, right? Even even the yeah. one with the with the two guys, the antique picker guys, all that shit. It's all set up. It's all staged. They they set up certain aspects of it, whatever. So obviously they do the same thing with these ghost shows. But regardless of whether you believe or not, sometimes they go to these extremes that I'm just like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. So I'm I'm listening to these assholes talk about these ghost cases or whatever. I don't know which show it was. And these fucking assholes truly believed or were acting like they believed that a ghost took a oven mitt, dropped it onto a stove, turned the stove on and disabled the fucking smoke detector to try to harm the people in the house. And, and, I'm just like do people really believe this like there's like these these Charles Manson ghosts out there that just want to just destroy you and kill you and kill your whole family that that they're they're conniving and 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 they can actually physically do all of these things that I mind you that's three separate physical things that would have to be done Drop the fucking thing on the stove, turn the stove on, and then disable the smoke detector. You're going to tell me that it's not entirely feasible that the smoke detector was already fucked up or the batteries were dead or whatever, and the stove was already on, and the fucking... And someone the, left the oven mitt on the stove? And, yeah, either they left the oven mitt on the stove or it just fell because of, like, you know, a hook fell or or whatever. You know, some just regular occurrence regular random occurrence happen and these assholes are trying to blame ghosts on it like it's fucking it, i swear to god it pisses me off every time i watch this shit because these fucking assholes are using all these instruments and, and and like it's just like jesus christ get the fuck out of my face with this stuff so i try to stay away from it but just that one sent me over the top have you ever seen these things yeah i mean look so I, i've got maybe a little bit varying viewpoint than you I, i'm not gonna say that ghosts don't exist or i don't think that the possibility because i feel like you know all life is energy energy like returns to energy or whatever so plus i mean i like i've had an encounter that i thought was you know something weird like supernatural so I won't, you know, I won't fucking say, yo, it's not possible. However, some of the shit like for these shows definitely seems like over the top. So would you say that when they have these guys doing the police event investigations and stuff like that, and those assholes are like supposedly leading them in the right direction, like you believe that stuff, the premonition folks? I know that's um, not ghosts, but it's a, it's another, you know. No, I mean, form. like, the psychic, the psychic mediums and shit like that. Yeah. Honestly, though, like, some of those dudes have been right. Like, I don't some believe of those, none of that shit. None, but some of those zero. psychics... So, look, it, it may be fucking simple deduction. You know, maybe these people, like, have looked at the facts and were able to deduce, like, a most likely scenario. But 
there's definitely been cases where like they've been able to lead police in the right direction or to disclose a name or disclose a potential, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, you hear all these haunting stories. Um, what you mean? Like when, when Polly Walnuts went to the fucking thing and, and the ghost whisperer <laughs> got all like talked to his, his first hit and probably got all <laughs> pissed off and left. <laughs> fucking sopranos <laughs> i don't know man listen you can believe what you want i believe what i'm gonna believe but these these shows are over the top i don't think there's any any i don't think anybody can disagree with that e- even even the wife who watches them all the time sometimes is like this is bullshit like <laughs> <laughs> so look you gotta think it's again it's it's about selling the show and if they were like, "Yeah, a book fell off the shelf," we think the we we think a ghost did it. That does that's not going to sell the show. But well, how about the instruments, that- dude? The fucking fancy instruments and and oh, did you hear that? And they replay it and they're they're drawing conclusions and saying, "Oh, they said um, uh, fuck that bitch," and they didn't really say fuck that bitch. It, it was just something that just went like. <laughs> <But> the- <laughs> But the, do you remember the days of vinyl? Like the big thing was you would take the vinyl and you would spin it backwards. Yeah, and there was like, like devil, yes. devil fucking <laughs> lyrics or whatever. You, you, yeah, yeah, when you're on. We were. <laughs> so I mean, it's that's just the same thing. Like when they do the white noise, they they record a room, and then you they'll. Die, get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like like there's not some guy in a microphone somewhere going. I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, hey, look, so, on, I'll guys. You, so I'll tell you, I had a supernatural experience. Um, some years ago I was like coming home from like work. I hope it wasn't it was a sexual one. <laughs> no, it wasn't a sexual one. Um, I was driving through the battlefield and like, as I got through the battlefield, like you had to drive, you have to drive like 25, 35 miles an hour through the battlefield. So you have to drive pretty slow. And as I was coming over the hill through the battlefield, I saw like a lantern across the road. Wait, 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 what the fuck is the battlefield? So Virginia, like Virginia was a big civil war battle area. Yeah. Um, But what's the battlefield? So there's battlefields where like different places in the area where battles, the Fredericksburg, like the battle of Fredericksburg were fought. Okay. I'm, so, I'm just asking because not everybody knows this stuff. Yeah, so there's an area where there's like a cross through where you can get from one side of town to the other side through this battlefield. And there's a road that runs through the battlefield. Okay. So it's it's run by, you know, National Park, for, you know, Park Forest Rangers and all that shit. So as I'm driving through there, I saw a lantern cross the road. And maybe, and maybe I was fucking tired. I don't. Was it like, green? <laughs> it's not a green lantern but i but i saw this lantern like slowly cross the road and it made me slow down because i was like oh shit like you know i thought maybe someone was you know walking through there at night you know jogging because people you know jog through there ride bikes but there was no one in sight and this lantern just crossed the road and then disappeared so you had a floating lantern drive by uh, float by you while you were driving home yeah like in front of the car and then this sounds like a fucking scooby-doo mystery dude <laughs> but i will say like when i passed that point where i'd seen the lantern like i have this real and blank. i wouldn't got away with it if it wasn't for those motherfucking <laughs> meddling kids <laughs> messing <with> kids <laughs> but w- when i when i ended up when i ended up passing that point like i got this unsettling feeling and then i was like all right you know i'm gonna get the fuck out of here because that was kind of weird and i went about my business all right. See now, I, I don't want to get too much into this, but I feel like the mind is a extremely powerful thing, and I feel like the mind can turn things into other things. And I'll give you an example. I was once a security guard doing overnights, and in some old ass buildings, and with like those big portraits of the fucking founder on the wall and stuff like that. And you would get a certain feeling when you walk through those areas. But 
it wasn't because there was fucking ghosts there. It's because your mind is like, damn, this is creepy as fuck. <laughs> so you start believing there's a fucking, this is shit might be haunted. You know, I, and, I, and I honestly believe it's just your mind playing tricks on you. But whatever, that, that, that's neither here or there. We, we, you believe it. I don't. I understand. Um, I, I, I don't hate on people who believe it. I just choose not to. Yeah. Um, so if, if, if you believe in ghosts, go for it. You know, if, if being the asshole that I am, I would probably be a guy that dressed up in all black and walked through the battlefield with some old school lantern just to fuck with people. But that's just me. <laughs> um, so let, let, let's talk about something else. Uh, I'm ghosted out. Um, I, 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 I mentioned this, or I, I, I wanted to talk about this because, and, and this is kind of random, which goes with the show, but basically architects are assholes. And I'm going to tell you why. Not because they put up these fancy fucking fountains in the front of buildings or because they only put, you know, restrooms on certain sides and then you got to go way the fuck around the corner a, a mile away just to take to, to take a shit. Like, architects are assholes because... And, and, I, sh- and I should say mostly urban architects are assholes because of the way they set up apartment buildings. And I know this from personal experience. Actually, some houses as well. Uh, Actually, a lot of houses as well. If you don't have a big house where they take and they separate the master bedroom from where the other bedrooms are, you're a fucking asshole. There's ways to separate bedrooms. If you put like let's say it's a two bedroom apartment or a two bedroom house and you put both bedrooms wall to wall you're a fucking asshole and you're cock blocking the fuck out of the 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 couple that's living in that house if they have a kid and the kid has to go in the other bedroom sometimes in some places you got to share two walls so you got a kid on this wall and you got a kid on this wall how the fuck do you go get busy and go nuts like, uh, how are you guys? Uh, you can't, you, you can't tear that ass up. You gotta be like, like, like squirrels, like fucking mice, fucking, like uh, uh, architects. What the fuck? You gotta turn up the music to cover your ball slaps. <laughs> and 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 you think the kids don't pick up on that? When all of a sudden the the mom and dad's TV gets really loud. Or, or or all of a sudden the music gets really loud. Like the kids the kids are not stupid. The kids know what's going on. But it's like you can't really go nuts. You can't really be you and, and be fucking Tarzan, King of the Jungle, because you got fucking little Sally in this room and you got little Jeffrey in this room and you're afraid of of of, of making too much fucking noise. So fuck you architects. What the fuck? You fucking assholes because you make all the money and you can have the big house with the fucking the rooms spread out all over the place on multiple levels and shit like that. Suck a dick. Fuck those guys. I mean, have you experienced this? I mean, you've lived in multiple places. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's I don't know, like when when my kids were younger, like that shit was the worst, man. Like, number one, because I think kids have like, I'm getting like mom or dad's getting ass radar and they pick up <laughs> on it right away. <laughs> they smell it in the so air. As, as soon as you slide in, you hear the <laughs> fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But I mean, like for real, like that's something I always thought about. Cause like, you know, I don't know if you've ever like, you think about it, like you stay at a hotel and, and you think about it like how many times have you stayed in a hotel and you know you're sharing a wall with someone else in the other room 
and I've even been in hotels and heard like someone breaking someone off. Oh hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. There's a paper you know, thin the room fucking. Beside me. Hell yeah. <laughs> you you can hit, hear them fart. You can like it's yeah. But at least there you can put up the TV, and they might know that that's what's going on, but they they don't give a fuck because they're not related. You know what I mean? In your uh, own unless. Unless you're doing some really kinky shit, and then you have to make that like, like <laughs> the sneaky the, the sneaky exit in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it depends on what the fuck you're saying and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> like if if you're in there saying yeah, jam that carrot, like, <laughs> may, <laughs> may, you might want to sneak out. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> You want me to toss that salad, girl? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm with you there, but um, but with family, it's just so much more amplified. It's just like, fuck, dude. Like, you want to let out the beast, but you can't. You got to let out the fucking kitten. And it's not fair. And it's because of these fucking architects. Fuck these guys. Why are we paying them so much? They're designing asshole places. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to get that off my chest. <laughs> speaking speaking of uh, sex or lack of sex, um, one of the things I just read an article about was the fact with all this, you know, COVID lockdown, um, sex toy sales are like through the roof. Like through the roof. Really? Yeah, like uh, the figures I read were like they're up something like thirty five percent. All right, so so um, is that is is that because people aren't meeting new people and going out on dates and stuff? Well, it's social distancing guidelines, the fact that like um, people who's like significant others and no 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 time out. Social distancing guidelines have nothing to do with this because if anybody's going to get some pussy or anybody is ready to get some dick, they get, don't give a fuck about social distancing guidelines. They are all in. Except for the fact, like if they haven't been dating anyone or seeing anyone. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, so like the yeah. dating stuff. Or, or their significant other, like maybe in the medical field and like, you know, a lot of, a lot of people like we're doing like nurses and things like that are quarantining. Um, I got a, I've got a friend and his girlfriend who like, they haven't seen each other in like two months. And just recently they were able to see each other because, you know, she got tested and she found out she wasn't positive for the virus. So she didn't want to take the chance of like exposing him because she deals with COVID patients. Yeah. I mean, I, I can see that. I can see, I can see people being careful. I, but I think the biggest, the biggest part is just people aren't meeting new people, so they're not doing the hookups with the fucking Tinder and all of that stuff. I mean, the other thing is a lot of people are spending a lot of time at home, and boredom is setting in. It's like, well, shit, I've done so everything else. I'm just you gonna think they're rub trying one to out spice it up? <laughs> spice it up, or like, if they're alone, like, it's something to do to pass time. Well. I guess. Um, well, and the funny thing about that article is one of the things they talked about was um, the this this sector in the tech in the in the toy industry, which is called teledildonics. <laughs> and what teledildonics is is these are sex toys that are web-based sex toys, and they just reported the highest sales numbers that like only one time ever before did they do as much sales as they did this time. Um, and it's basically, these are sex toys that are web-based. So like couples can interact with each other without being with each other with these like web toys. What the fuck is the point of that? So basically like, so one no, of I, like, I, I understand how it works, but what's the point of that? I think it, I mean, honestly, dude, I, I think that's something for like people with insecure relationships. 
<laughs> like you can only you can only masturbate and think about me. <laughs> or maybe it's the oh yeah, you know, like because I guess all right. I don't know if I want to like break that down. Like so there's like the pocket pussy thing and when the chick like puts the thing in her sniz, the pocket pussy like gets the same reaction as what she puts in her sniz. So it's like he's virtually fucking fucking her. So all right, so he puts his dick in a pocket pussy, which is like a, a fleshlight type of thing, I'm I'm assuming, right? Yeah. And then she inserts something in herself. Yeah. So when he goes to Pound Town, his his movements interact with what she's feeling. Yeah, or or vice versa. Like I think I think with that, like the thing I saw in the thing, it was actually like her, the way she inserted was a stimulation he got from the pocket pussy. So she's shoving a dildo in her. Yeah. Jesus Christ. This world is, is holy shit. It, it's, it's funny that you mentioned this because while wow, th- that is insane, um, I, I don't see how I could get myself off with that. I did. I, it it begs to the question of sex toys are a women woman thing. I, I mean, I may be in the minority here, but like, <laughs> what? You've seen some of these fucking sex dolls, these blow up dolls, these fleshlights. What self respecting yeah, gotta- man? is going to stick their dick in those things. You got to be, a, it's got to be a certain kind of personality, dude. Like <laughs> it, it makes me think of uh, the, the show, Dave. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't of, seen it. So not to like give away the show, but there's an episode where like he's fucking the sex doll <laughs> and he's got the sex doll with like floppy legs. And it's just like, it's a pussy and some floppy legs. And you throw it on the counter and he's like banging it out like he was doing a girl doggy style. <laughs> and then his girl catches him and he's like trying to get rid of it. He's got to like throw it in the shower. <laughs> and I'm looking at things like, how the fuck do you get off to that? Like, exactly. exactly. And, and to the point where they have designer ones that supposedly are like these porn actresses uh, contours and and vaginas and and buttholes and stuff like that like (sighs) now now one of the things that i was looking at on that teledodonics thing is they actually they have those like i'm glad it was you that was looking at that shit and not me but go ahead (laughs) so in this article they were talking about like those those flesh sites can actually be programmed to like porn videos so like there's a certain fucking thing of porn that is like you can watch that porn and the actual actress is fucking herself in the porn but you get that sensation in that thing from that porn so it's like porn so it's like virtual reality like a enhanced yeah. virtual reality jesus christ just fucking pay for a whore what the fuck <laughs> all the money you're gonna spend and all this goddamn technology just go out and buy a fucking prostitute what the fuck they're still out there you can still get them I I understand there's diseases and shit, but fuck, put a condom on, bro. Get get the real and, thing. You're trying to unemploy the oldest profession in the world. I mean, that's <laughs> never going away. But what the fuck, dude? You're you're over there fucking silicone and and with gels and shit. Go get some real pussy. Fucking spend if you have to. Get a. a I hate to say this. Get an ugly fat chick like. Uh, there's ways. There's ways. Fuck. Just. God damn it. It's it's this fucking. This new wave of. Like social inadequate assholes that can't. And, and by the way. Not to make any stereotypes or anything. But those motherfucking Asians man. They have a lot of this. This, this technology going on. Those motherfuckers are the foref- forefront. Of this. This technology. I think it's I think it's because sexual behavior there is so uh repressed. Yeah, like with the blurred fucking porn and stuff like that. 
Yeah, which, by the way, what the fuck is that? Like, what is the point? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. As a young lad, we used to have... <laughs> we you used flip to, the channel? <laughs> you put the channel on the porn channel, and it was all garbled up, like, like sideways, like horizontally against the you, screen. You, you might catch, like, the one nipple over here. <laughs> yes. Yes, every now and then you'd see some pussy. You'd see, like, a titty or, or, or something like that. And it was like, whoa, check that shit out. <laughs> so you, like, turn it real fast. And you're like... <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it was like it was like s- soft core for a long time and then i guess somebody was able to get a, a a law passed where they said if people are paying for it you can't like limit it to soft core and then that's when it got really good cuz you saw like you'd get like a little angle of of fucking like some serious poundage going on and you'd be like oh shit and then two like 3 seconds later it would switch on you and be like fuck but then Five seconds later, something else would come up. So it was almost watchable when you're a kid and you have no options. Like not these days, or everything. You learned, or, or you learned to just flip flat. Like when you when you flash to the channel, a lot of yeah. times, like it wouldn't be. It would pop up right away. Yeah, <laughs> you'd see like you'd see one scene. Yeah, you, you'd just be flipping back and forth, flipping back and forth with with one hand, the other hand on your pud. <laughs> Or you yeah. just fucking find two cha- like two of the channels that were playing porn, and you just but, flip back and forth. But and and that just goes to show you how fucking easy these motherfucking kids have it these days, where they can do these searches and find it like nothing. Where we had to like oh. go through these great lengths and measures to to toss one. Dude, off. do you remember dirty mag? Like, do you remember dirty magazines? Of course, of course yeah, I do. Like, kids don't have to experience like the. The stealing the their dirty magazine from an Listen, uncle or a dad. When I, or... when I was when I was a young boy, <laughs> we lived near this huge shopping center in Chelsea, and there used to be a dirty um, movie theater that was there. And it, it, I think at this point it was all closed down and everything. But we used to go down there and fuck around and play, especially in the winter time, because they they would make they would. Um, they would plow up the snow and they would make these huge snow mountains and shit like that. And we would just play on the mountains and stuff. But, um, but if you looked around the theater, you would find like the actual film that they used for the movies, man, that was like, like I was fucking gold miner, dude. I was just like, <laughs> I was pulling that shit out. Just fucking like, <laughs> I found, I struck gold, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's that's how crazy shit was i mean uh, on the man once again on the man but um <laughs> but yeah so um so one of the things that that actually happened today i was i was driving and you know when you know, it always happens you get this one asshole who either doesn't know where they're going or they just drive like uh, this, this fucking slow, like Sunday fucking s- Sunday school driver asshole that's like 80 years old, whatever. And so the, the guy in front of me, fin- the, the person driving in front of us, I was like the third vehicle. He finally pulls over. And you could see the guy in front of in front of us look over, like to see to look at the guy, and it it made me think: Why do we have to do that? Why do we have to see what the person looks like? It never fails. Whether they cut you off, whether they they're just driving like an asshole, whether like I I don't know whatever reason they piss you off. You have to look and see what they look like. I don't know why. Why? Why? Like, even when you're you're not gonna flip them off or you're not gonna like say anything, you still gotta look. Like you, like, like you got some dastardly plan that, like, at some point, I'm gonna see you down the road. <laughs> but even when you don't, 
even when you don't like even if you if there's no malice like even if you're just like wow this guy's a fucking asshole and you're not like in a really pissed off mood you still have to look like you you could just be in a mad <laughs> chill mood and you and you're just you just drive and you're like oh look at this asshole and you're not really pissed off about it but when you pass him you always do the motherfucker <laughs> and, and i can't figure out why like why well, do I, I, th- I think it's a face looks like i think it's a subconscious thing too because like it's like you almost want to, to make eye contact with you so you could like send them the eye message like you're a fucking asshole sometimes yes sometimes definitely and and maybe we need to get make road rage a topic, you know, at some point. This isn't that this isn't that time. But I guess my point is whether it's contentious or whether you're upset or whether you're just curious, you always look. There's never a time where you don't look to see what the asshole in front of you looks like. It never fails. It's a hundred percent out of a hundred times. Am I wrong? No, I, I've definitely been there. I've done it. I've done it. And, then, and like, you do. Wait, you always look. And, and what about like if you do something by accident and you're on the, the look end, like you're on the receiving end of the look, what do you do? Like you know it's your bad. <laughs> you, look, you look away. You don't make eye contact. kind of like giving the... <laughs> You kind of have to. Like, you don't want to give him the satisfaction of giving a good look at you. Like, dude, I already. So, even if you weren't listening to your radio, you're adjusting the dial. <laughs> yeah. Or you're checking your phone. Like, like, I mean, I'm not giving you that satisfaction. I fucked up. I know I fucked up. I, you know, I might, sometimes I might even throw up my hand and say, sorry, you know, like, as, as a, I, I fucked up. My bad. I didn't mean it. But they'll still look at you. So fuck you! You're not you're not getting the satisfaction, motherfucker. I'm giving you the. <laughs> and as they're driving away, they're like, yeah, I bet you are sorry. Fucking drag off. <laughs> well, that always cracks me up, anyways. The hardos and, and the the road rage stuff, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, I don't know. You got anything else on that? Nah, I, I think it's funny, man. I I I recently. Uh, I saw an accident that was posted online and uh, just a little side tidbit on this. So it happened like right in front of a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and one of the things that I thought was comical about it was, you know, they were like, Oh, you know, immediately when it happened, the Chick-fil-A employees came running over to like, see if they could assist. And I was thinking about that. I was like, you know, Chick-fil-A is known for their service. So, you know, my comment on that was like, you know, I was like, yep. Yeah, repaired both vehicles and left the six peaks in the center console. <laughs> <laughs> and then one yeah. of the dudes was like, man, it was either an eight piece or 12 piece. I was like, no, because they hand fed them the other two chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> they looked hungry. <laughs> yeah. that, that eh, Chick-fil-A does go the extra mile. You gotta love them. Um, so I was watching some sports talk the other day because sports is, thank God, getting closer to coming back. But um, one of the things that they discovered was there's, I guess they're they're busting it out in like Japan or, or something like that. There's an app that allows you to cheer or boo or make other noises, whatever whatever's on the app. And they, they're setting up like speakers all over the stadium so that when they play, you can literally be at home doing this. Like, I, I mean, yeah, you're at home watching the game, right? And you'll have your phone and you'll have the app going and you'll just be like, to cheer. Like, and this is how you cheer. <laughs> cheer the fucking guys. Like, and it makes a, a, a cheering sound in the stadium. Like just mashing the button on your on your app on your phone for for those not watching the video and and listening, and and this is this is their one of their their ways of 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 dealing with 
you know, no crowds in the stands. Not not to mention the cutouts that they're putting on all the seats to make it seem like there's people in the in the stands. <laughs> like of, of legit like real people's faces. I'm sure they're making a promotion out of it where like send us your face and we'll put it on the, the fucking on the seats and like people cannot people cannot deal with the fact that there are not stands like people in the stands. And I don't, I don't understand why. As long as I get to watch the motherfuckers play against each other, that's all I care about. I don't give a fuck if, if, if they don't get amped up because they're not getting, you know, the cheers. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, so I was flipping through the other day and like, you know, wrestling's still going on. And you see like them wrestle in like empty arenas. It's fucking weird. It's weird, but you'll get used to it. Yeah. I mean, I think, like, if honestly, it would probably be better if they just wrapped the whole ring in, in a curtain <laughs> and just did curtains all the way around because it wouldn't be as weird. As all right, let, let me all ask you this. Seats. Let me ask you this. Would it be less weird if they had cutouts of people in all those seats with with their faces? Like, they just basically <laughs> these... <laughs> <laughs> and additionally, people were mashing their app buttons to to pump in crowd noise. Yeah, that's, would it be less that's weird? Absolutely. <laughs> and and who's that dude? Like, all right, so you're a huge sports fan. Like, are you going to be at home mashing it? No, hell no. <laughs> I, I I'll, I'll scream my dick off, but I'm not going to mash no fucking buttons while I'm watching the fucking thing. Are you kidding like, me? You scream, you scream at the TV. No one's gonna hear you. Oh, exactly. Like I always do. Like when there's tons of fans in the stands, I'll scream at the fucking the the players. I'll scream at the refs. I'll I'll scream at everybody. But I'm not gonna be sitting there mashing no fucking buttons on my goddamn phone. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It, oh, uh, I don't know. I, I don't think there's anything else we can really say about that. It's just just out of this world. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no one's mashing it, man. I, I don't know. You got to be you gotta be that dude that's sitting at home waiting for a, a fucking protest <laughs> who doesn't watch sports to be like, hey, I could get in on this, app, you know, this this app. <laughs> well, hey, with, with all this COVID stuff, maybe that's the next wave, like virtual protests. They'll get a fucking virtual protest app and and motherfuckers would just go out there and set up a bunch of speakers and then you could just mash the button and it'll and, say it'll and, say justice for all outs. justice for all <laughs> cutouts and cutouts of fucking protesters <laughs> just yeah. lined up blocking yeah, the and highway you, <laughs> and, and you got everybody at home social distancing just mashing their fucking buttons <laughs> I don't know. Um so what, one of the one of the things that recently, I don't know how it popped into my brain was maybe because we talked about this already, the lack of music that these cocksuckers are putting out. Like, I'm really disappointed in the music industry. You guys are failing big time, but whatever. That's that's another story. Um, back in the day, they used to make like when movies would come out, they used to make fire soundtracks for the movie. So the soundtrack was almost as much anticipated as the movie itself. So, and, but, and sometimes the soundtrack would sell the movie. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So I guess, I guess my thought was, why don't they do that anymore? Is it like a money thing? Like artists are charging too much? Or maybe they just, couldn't get the licensing rights since they fucking recycle every single movie nowadays. They couldn't get the original licensing to yeah, the fucking but, songs. <laughs> but, but if you notice, a lot of these movies are using like old songs and they still got to pay, right? So why not? Why not? Like, I don't understand wh why they went away from that because it would like... I it, it's for certain movies I would have just mu just as much anticipation and maybe just because I'm a music guy, I would have ju just as much anticipation for the soundtrack as I would the movie. You know, 
I mean, you look at like shows like Empire, like on TV, who like made buku bucks off their albums for the show. Yeah, I, I never really watched that, so I don't know like how much that intertwined. But that that's a that's a well, television. I mean, so I mean, for example, like Empire was I mean it was a show basically about music. No, I know that, so, but it's also a television but, show. But all the artists on the show were actors who portrayed artists. So when you have like these artists like you know, Jesse Small, who's singing on this album that people are buying, who wasn't known for music, but they sold a shit ton of fucking music for the soundtracks for the show. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's the parallel to like what they used to do for movies. It's a little different, but I, I, I guess I get, I get where you're, where you're connecting it. Um, you know, basically like this can lead to this. X can lead to Y. I, 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 I mean, see that. There's there's still a market for it, obviously. If they can do it with TV shows, like the but market's like, still there. But I think with, with the soundtracks, the soundtracks would drop before the movie. And so it was almost like like you said, it would it would it would almost make you anticipate the movie even more. Um yeah. and I, I, I don't know. I, I just it was a cool thing back in the day. I wish they would do it again. Um, you know, like if if you're gonna spend all this money on the rights to to put these 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 things in your in your um in your movies, these songs, then why not come up with some some original shit? <clears throat> yeah, you know, and and this this isn't really soundtracks, but it it, it kind of in some ways relates to it. Like if you if you follow certain YouTubers or if you watch, if you watch certain videos or if you listen to certain podcasts and, and this is, this is why we try not to be in that, in that mold. They, and God bless them. They do a good job, but they all like, not all of them, but a lot of them have their little shtick where they have a saying or they have like uh, uh, some type of gimmick when they start their shows that they have to do for every episode. Now, because these are, are probably way better produced than, than this show, um, just think about how many times they fuck up and have to do their intros over and over again. Um, if it's not just, you know, a basic standard intro. And they try to keep it live and keep it fresh every time they do a new one. Just think, uh, like, and, and this is why I didn't want to do it. Like, you always have to bring that same energy and you always have to sell it. So, like, if I'm feeling like a piece of shit today, if I'm hungover and, or I got a headache or I'm not getting any pussy or wh- whatever, whatever the, the, whatever's just got me in a bad mood. And I got to get on here with you and put on this fucking facade where I'm like, yeah, here we go, baby. We're going to fucking knock it out of the park tonight, bitches. Like, I would probably want to just rather just go in the other room and shoot myself. So this is part of the and, – and I know I just went way left sidetrack, but it just popped into my head. <laughs> I, I I grabbed that motherfucking mall train and I drove it down the street right now because I took a left. <laughs> but but the point the point still remains. Like that's why we don't want to do that shit. And and I just wanted to throw that in there because it just popped into my head. Um, but so, getting back to get, getting back to the montages. All right. Uh, I mean the 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 soundtracks. Um, that led me to think about movie montages and I know that you've seen this because I think every young young man around our age group has seen this movie and it was a gift to me because they played it probably two nights ago and it was late at night wifey was sleeping nobody was around no distractions and I actually got to watch this movie like and just kind of 
look at it from my perspective now versus when I was, uh, I don't know, um, 13. And the movie is Bloodsport. Have you seen Bloodsport? Yeah, I've seen Bloodsport. Did you like Bloodsport? I did like Bloodsport. One of my uh, one of my favorite like martial artists actors um, from that era was in that movie. For those Bolo that don't, Sung. who? Bolo Yi Sung. Bolo, uh, the guy Bolo from Enter the Dragon. Yes. Where they actually use his name, Bolo. Yeah. Did you know that wasn't really his name? They. they no, I didn't. They, I didn't they, know that. He took he took his name from Enter the Dragon, and that became his acting name. Well, whatever. Um, it, it's <laughs> it's it's funny that 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 was your favorite guy because everybody's favorite guy was Jean Claude Van Damme, who was the star of the movie, not fucking the the one of the guys from Enter the Dragon, uh, who the star was Bruce Lee. But anyways, um, no, because. Because I saw this guy like in martial arts things. I went to events and saw him actually like all right, do all right, martial arts. All right, fine. You can eat <laughs> Bolo guy. It's fine. Uh, he actually, you know, has a his own tie. But um, <laughs> so so I'm watching and and, and by, yes, Van Dam was a star. Came out in 1988. Um, and when I watched it this time as an adult. As a 45-year-old man, it made me laugh more than once. It became a comedy for me. It's it when I was 13, it was fucking cool. It was kick ass. Like dude, like Van Damme was out there just p- putting in work. Now, I was laughing my dick off. Like I was literally laughing out loud. And I'm not even exaggerating. And the montage was a big part of it. Like These motherfuckers actually did a double montage. He, the first one, he's running away from, from the cops or whatever, who are trying to take him back to the U S and then the, and then, um, God, what was the second one? No, I'm sorry. The first one, he was fighting. The montage was him fighting in the first round of the, the tournament. You remember the tournament? Yeah. And the Kumite. Yeah, yes, exactly, exactly. See, so I know you know it. So the first one was the montage of him fighting in the tournament. And then, the, and then right afterwards, these fucking guys are trying to take him back to the U.S. And he runs from them and boom, back-to-back montages. It's a whole montage of him running away from them. It was unbelievable. So you got basically like 10 minutes of, of just fucking montage. And they Is make that shit- the one where he's like... Is that the one where he's like jumping on the boats? Yes. Yes. It was hilarious. I was laughing my balls off. So 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 then then the montages are over, right? And I think it's like the 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 next round of the tournament. And it's another montage. Well, no. No, I'm sorry. It's not technically a well no, it is. It's another fucking montage. Like, not right away, but like later on. Um, they're playing, basically, they're playing music while showing the fights. And the way the guys are dancing around and stuff, it, or like jumping around or, or doing their, you know, their, their fighting, they look like they're dancing. <coughs> it looks like a Street Fighter like game, like where. You know, you have the the video game has the little music in the background, and these motherfuckers are just like just going with the music, and it's just like, what the fuck is going on here? So, if you haven't watched it since back in the day when it came out, I highly recommend watching it just for the pure comedic value, because you're gonna see shit now in such a different light. And you're going to laugh your ass off at this movie. And I'm not just talking about the cheesy soap opera acting that's going on because it's fucking cheesy. But just the decisions that the filmmakers made, like, all right, you got this tough guy, badass fighting movie, right? So you got all dudes watching it, right? 
why do they focus on how ripped Jean Claude is? Like showing his body and shit like that. So even when this cocksucker gets the reporter, this nice little piece, this this nice little blonde chick, pretty eyes, beautiful. Instead of them showing anything that has to do with her, they show this cocksucker pulling his fucking drawers on, showing you his ass. Like your main fucking, your main audience are dudes. Why are you showing us that? We don't want to see that shit. We want to see the blonde. Show us the fucking blonde. What the fuck are you guys doing? Who are you catering to? God, damn, I was so pissed because I didn't get to see some tits or anything like that because I'm thinking 13-year-old me would have loved that blonde. But, you know, nothing. All I'm seeing is John claudes fucking ass. <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is that whole era, like, you think of, like, how many movies the montage was, like, I mean, Rocky. Rocky oh, yeah. Full of montages. Oh, yeah. Montages everywhere. Even in, like, the 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 hijinks type comedy movies. You know, like Revenge of the Nerds or something. Like, there was montages. There was montages all over the place. Fucking throwing out montages like fucking candy. <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing that that's gone away. Because it was a staple in the 80s. In fact, it was it was so much a staple. Do you remember when um, Punch Out came out? Of course. So Mike Tyson's Punch Out when it came out after the what the first three fights, <clears throat> there was a montage scene. Do you remember the yeah. montage scene? Yeah, yeah. He run, running behind the fat dude with the fucking with on the bike. <laughs> I remember the music and everything. <laughs> Fuck, so, so that tells you like how much the montage was a staple of that era. Uh, yeah, true, true that. And but uh, trust me, watch Bloodsport. You, it's, it's still entertaining, but you'll just look at even, it. Even it, Super Mario, even Super Mario had a montage. It did. When you hit the flag. Eh. It wasn't the, going to, I, I think da, the, the, da, 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 yeah, that was more like a victory. That was more like a victory lap. I, I, I think you, you hit it with the Rocky one or the Mike Tyson's punch out. Um, but watch it again because it's definitely entertaining and it'll, you'll definitely see it in a different, from a different perspective as a grown ass man at this point. So I, 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 I highly recommend it to everyone. Um, can you think of anything else with, it, with, with that type of stuff? Because if not, I'll just move on. Um, I'm trying to think of if I've seen any recent montages in movies that were like... I doubt it. Like, like Family Guy makes fun of it all the time. And... But other than that, I mean, I, I hate to use like the Creed movie because that's kind of like the montage style was the Rocky style. You know, they just kind of took that same thing with Creed. Was it was there actually a montage, though? Like a full yeah, montage where they like play a whole song? Yeah. Well, like while he's training. I, I haven't seen it in a while. I don't remember it, but I, I, hey, maybe they're bringing it back. Or maybe it just fits certain movies. Yeah. I mean, there was montages in like the Karate Kid, like like all them old, like tons. There's montages everywhere, dude. And someday we're going to have a, a discussion about like some of these older movies or, or some of our favorite shows. Like That's a future show. Um, because this generation doesn't doesn't know about some of these great old movies that that were out there for for guys like me you know and i'm not just talking revenge of the nerds i'm talking like porkies i'm talking about like hollywood nights like um there, there's a lot of old school comedy type of movies that that um fuck i can't remember what the name of it is where, where the kid with tom cruise is in it they went to fucking mexico to to get to get laid um so there's tons of them there's tons of them out there 
Yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll do that another time. Right now... Porky's um, Revenge. <laughs> yeah, Por- Porky's Revenge, exactly. Or, or I think it was Porky's, Porky's <sighs> 2, Porky's Revenge, and then there might have even been... I think there was part 3 also, but whatever. Um, so I, when he I went to... His dick, when he stuck his dick... No, 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 no we're not going to talk about that right now. We're not going to talk about Porky's right now. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to save that. Um... <laughs> So um, I went I went to the to the Seven uh, Eleven real quick the other day, and it's a fairly busy Seven Eleven. It's on a busy busy intersection, and um, you know they're trying to do the social distancing and all of that stuff. They have the the line set up or whatever, and there was this one asshole. Like I just went in there to get something to drink, and like. I, it was supposed to be in and out, right? There was probably only two guys in front of me in line. And then this third guy that was actually at the register. And this cocksucker was just like bent over leaning on, you know, like just like leaning on his, on his elbow, looking at the fucking scratchies, like turning in a scratchy that he won on. And then just like, I don't know how much he won. Maybe it was a hundred bucks or whatever. But then it was like, oh, let me get two number twos. And then let me get, uh, let me get two number twelves. And it was just like this long ass. Pr- and all of us are sitting there like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Then it's like, all right, so how much is that left? And it's just like, what the fuck? Like, you, on one hand, you're trying to understand that it's his turn, so he can do what he needs to do. But it just makes you start to think like, there's a lot of people who live the scratch life. Like these motherfuckers spend their whole paychecks on this shit, so they'll go in there, and they'll. So a lot of them won't even wait till they get the fuck out. They'll start scratching them right there, right away. To see if they win, so they can double down and go back and get more. So I, well, I you'll guess, even hear them. You'll even hear them ask the cashier, like, uh, "What number is that ticket?" Yeah, yeah, because they have a system. Everyone has a system. Every single one of them has a system, and and sometimes they don't even know if they won, so they'll make them check every single one just to see if they missed anything. So these assholes are wasting everybody's time. For their for their fucking little gambling itch, and and they're probably doing scratch tickets because they got shut off by bookies and stuff like that because they they owe the money. Like <laughs> they're everywhere, and 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 it's even worse now because they can't do the they can't do the kino. I don't know if they have the kino over there in Virginia, but it's basically so. Kino's coming in August. We're getting kino in Virginia. Yeah. So, so these these motherfuckers just hang out in the store, in your local Seven Eleven or or whatever. If you if you got a Wawa, then you're they're hanging out there, just looking at the monitor, playing the next game of Kino, and they'll spend hours there, just gambling. And it's just like, what a fucking sad life to live to live the scratch life. I I am not above buying a scratch ticket. Don't get me wrong, I'll fucking scratch them off with with the best of them. But I'll buy one. I'll take it home. I'll scratch it at home. If I win, great. If I don't, oh well. You don't win if you don't try, right? But well, these fucking you guys, assholes. You, get, you guys don't have the kiosk like scratch machines there. Oh yeah, they have those too. But like in 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 most of the liquor stores and Seven Elevens and all of that stuff, they're behind the counter. So yeah. you actually like. Like you said, you have these assholes asking, like, what number's the fucking, the, the 24? And they'll tell them it's, it's 12. Oh, no, I don't want that one. What number's the fucking 18? <laughs> and it's just like, come on, guy. Like, the, we, I got beers to drink. Ain't nobody got time for this bullshit. Fucking get a fucking scratchy. Go scratch the fucking thing. Get the fuck out of my way. What the fuck? 
Go go bet on a game. Go do get some real juice. Why are you wasting your fucking time with this shit? You're just giving them back. You win. Okay, great. You won five hundred. How much the fuck did you give them already? A thousand to win that five hundred? You stupid fuck. Because you're always gonna come out on the bottom end. It's just like so, the casinos. Uh, well, see now Virginia. Virginia has these new things, um, and they've been they've been here about a year, and they just got I guess approved to be here for another year. Um, called uh, skill machines, uh, Virginia Queens like skill machines, and they're basically like slots, except for they what made them legal and they're not slots is the fact that you have to touch the screen. So they're like it's like tic tac toe. So you get two symbols that are that are like, and then you you hit whatever's there and you make it a wild and it becomes a match. So they're they're called games of skill. But are they really? Are they really games? Of, the like, app- are they are they winnable, or do you have to be some sub fucking like autistic savant no, you to actually win it? No, no, you don't have to be. It's bro. I got a cherry. I got a cherry. Oh, I'm gonna make this a cherry by hit making a wild, three in a row. So it's like tic tac toe. So it's what? really. But it's like super speed or something. No, so you hit the spin button. It comes up. And you say, okay, I got two in a row. You hit the third one, you make a match, and it pays you whatever that symbol pays. Um, How's the that other thing though? about that is, well, that's how they got around the game of chance thing because you had to actually physically touch the screen and make the match. <clears throat> so, so you'd win every time, no? No, because no, you don't always necessarily get two symbols in a row. To make a match oh. to get three in a row. Oh, okay. Um, so it's still a game of chance. The other thing is, if you, let's say you don't win, you do have the option of like clicking on the thing and then going to play this game like Simon to win your money back. So if you're spending like, if it's $2 to spin, if you miss it and you don't get anything, you can click the follow me button and you hit follow me and then you play 36 rounds of <laughs> fucking Simon. To Jesus win your Christ. two dollars back, thirty six rounds. Two dollars back. <laughs> so you do have to be a fucking autistic savant to to win. To win even money back. So like, if not, most people don't play follow me. They just fucking spin it again. So, but, but it is a chance because it's based on those first two. Those first two. Yeah, I like, mean, but you can actually preview like that thing. You can preview your next puzzle. So you can look at what's coming next. This is confusing talking about it. Like I, I think I think that's something you have to see. You just fucked up this with this whole topic with 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 this stuff. I, I don't get it. I, well, see, I don't that's understand the thing, where, where you're going with this. You're you're, you're so you, they they have you this. just took the fucking mall train <laughs> and you you took it away from me and you took it to the right. Like where, what the fuck are we talking about here? Well, I'm going I'm to bring it right down the fucking center lane. Woo, woo, because they have them in the 7-Elevens here. And people hang out in the 7-Elevens and play these games. And then when you, when you win money, you cash out the ticket, and then you take it to the register, and they give you the money for it. So you take your little queen ticket, and you go to the register. So there's always this asshole that put in 100 bucks to cash out a $100 ticket who now is standing in a line, like, cashing that in. And then a lot of times if they play like after hours, the people are like, oh, we don't have the money. Or they're like, oh, we'll give you a money order. So now you got to wait for this asshole to get a money order for the $100 fucking queen ticket that he just got. You, you know, <laughs> because you know they won't it, pay him cash. You know what it reminds me of? Um, like the scratchy guys and even, even your scenario. It reminds me of the arcade back in the day before they had the automatic ticket counter where you actually had to count tickets manually and you would just walk up there with a fucking like two handfuls of tickets. Yeah. And and the poor bastard at the counter has to like pull them out and like stretch them out and all right, 10, 20, (laughs) 30, like, and it, and it took forever just so you could get some stupid fucking pencil eraser and, and a little frog that you could, flip the tab and it would jump like and maybe a few fucking blow pops like 
that's what that shit reminds me of. Like, no and thanks. Now, now, now a lot of them don't even fucking spit out tickets anymore. Like, you get the points and it swipes right back onto your card. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. So it's it's been modernized. But the way you're talking, like, we're taking a step backwards. And even with these assholes with the scratch, scratchies, it's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe they just need to make an app and just do it on, on well, you know. So R- Virginia has the mobile scratcher like app here, and it's fucking terrible. So you, know, you have to, and, and I understand why because these guys actually enjoy the rush of scratching that fucking winner. So like, it's not the same, do this. It's, but it's not the same you on your. Do it app. on your phone, but it's not you the same. Your, but here's the stupid thing: you can't like you can't buy these scratchers and play at home. You have to go where lottery tickets are sold to buy the scratchers for your app, like through the app. So what the fuck is the point of it? <laughs> so I'm like, so this, this is one of the things that we offered at my work. Like Virginia Lottery came to us and gave us this option like that we could be a Virginia So I still have to lottery. go to the store. <laughs> That so de- you still have to go. Whole, that defeats the whole fucking convenience of the fucking app. What the fuck? Whose fucking brilliant idea was that? What an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And that leads to my point. Scratchers get off on the smell of the, the little, you know, the scratchy fragments that, that are flying in the air and the dust, like the dicks get hard. Like they love that shit. Like they, they're not just, they're, oh, are you kidding me? They're, they're over there. Like they're fucking, they're in a zone when they're doing that. When they got a big full fucking thing of, of uh, a sleeve of, of number tens, those motherfuckers are going ham on that shit. Like they're, and they're, you can always tell like, and you can always tell like the pro scratcher because they don't even scratch the whole like, they don't even scratch the whole lottery ticket. They're just like, ah, oh, it's a B. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a Z there. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Those motherfuckers. I'm, I, I know some of them win money, but I like I always say, a scratchy guy will always tell you about his big win. He'll never tell you about the hundreds of losses he had before he got that big win. But that's that's any gambler. That's any gambler. True. True. <laughs> true. Like, uh, if you've ever been out with a gambler, uh, they're you know they're in the casino and they're like, oh, I'm up seven hundred bucks. They're like, yeah, but how much did you spend? <laughs> well, I mean, I, well, if you're I up seven hundred, <laughs> no, if you're up seven hundred, then you're up. No, the, the, but not for a gambler. They're up seven hundred in that moment. <laughs> They may have already put in thirteen hundred. Like, well, that's worry. ass backwards. But I, I, I get you. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I, 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 that we, I think, thought was a good idea, was, um, you know, for our, our listeners who, you know, we're starting to get more, and and thank you to everybody who is giving us a shot and who's putting up with our stupidity. Um, we decided to start taking listener listener um, submitted randos. So one of our listen, listener submitted randos asked, um, do women crop dust? What say you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I think women are probably the worst offenders of the silent crop dust. I agree. I think the real question is, do women crop crop dust intentionally? Mm. Ah. Ah. <laughs> that's a that's a savage thing too. <laughs> and 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 I have an I have an experience with this that would lead to suggest that a majority of women 
do not crop dust intentionally because they're just not wired that way. Women don't, they, they don't find. They don't, get, they don't get as much amusement out of farts yeah, as we do. Yeah, they don't find the humor that, that we as men find in farting and, um, you know, watching the reaction on her face when she walks in the door and she looks like somebody just fucking shot her in the fucking throat. Like, <laughs> we, we see, we're thinking about it now. We're laughing our dicks off, but because, <laughs> because here's, here's what's funny. And this is, this is even a chick thing. So recently I was at work and I went into the bathroom to take a leak. And of course, you know, I ripped one in the bathroom. And when I came out of the bathroom, like one of my other coworkers was going in <laughs> and I stood outside the bathroom for a second because I knew it was like, it was foul. <laughs> so I came out and I said to one of my other managers, I was like, bro, he's, I just murdered him. I was like, I just let out this deadly thing in the bathroom and he followed me in there. <laughs> I was just geeking on it. He was laughing. So when he came back, I was like, yeah, how was your bathroom experience? And he was like, oh, was that you? <laughs> it's like a, like a bug bomb. <laughs> his eyes were tearing. Like, <laughs> his, his nostrils were all red. <laughs> he was, uh, uh, dude, it was one of those, it was one of those, you know, egg breakfasts, like farts that burn so, when they come out. <laughs> so in, in my personal experience, this happened unintentionally by wifey so i was um i was washing some clothes and i took some some stuff out of the dryer and the dog's bed is in the bedroom and i guess she thought i wasn't coming in and she let one fly and me like an asshole the the she was sitting like right next to the edge of the bed where the dog's um the dog's bed was and I'm I'm going to put the blanket on the dog's bed, so I bend over right into the motherfucker, like just, like I jumped right into the eye of the storm, dude. And I was just like, <laughs> "What the fuck?" And I'm just looking around, and she's just got this embarrassed but smiling, like almost trying not to crack up in my face, like just holding it in because she didn't mean to crop dust me, but she fucking, holy shit, dude! If if I was a, a pest. I got I got the brunt of that fucking that that crop dust because wow and she once it became noted see and and this is where they do find they do find it funny when it's on the other end she was laughing her fucking ass off at me like once once she got caught she laughed her ass off <laughs> I, so I I think it's fair to say the answer is yes they do it no probably 90% of the time they don't intend to do it because I guarantee you there's some fucking bitches out there that and, and I would say if it was a dude that was doing it on purpose he's a fucking asshole so don't don't take the bitch as as you know as what it's not a bitch is a bitch there's some bitches out there that if somebody bumped their cart at Walmart or something like that, there are some savages that will purposely let out some fucking heat to fuck with that fuck with that person. I guarantee you. So it's not a hundred percent. Oh, I I have definitely been in Walmart and come around the corner, and there's only some woman way down the aisle, and I'm like, yo. I know you just cropped up so this whole but, but but that was unintentional. What I'm saying yeah. is there are women that do intentionally do it. Don't get me wrong. And and listen, some of these mass holes, I can fucking see some of them doing it. Like, yeah, ha, ha, you fucking asshole. Ah, I smell that <laughs> fuckhead. Like, are you kidding me? There's some serious mass holes here that will totally crop dust the dude in a second. So and, and and if they're here, they're everywhere else. Oh yeah, Bobby, how's you fucking like that, huh? Eh? <laughs> Smell that, you fuckhead. 
I remember the other day when you fucking gave me the Dutch oven, you motherfucker. Yeah. How you like that, you fucking asshole? Yeah. Call that the Mystic River, huh? <laughs> fucking Chelsea Creek right in your fucking face, bitch. <laughs> Anyways, um, I got nothing else. You got anything else? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, we'll fucking see you fuckheads next week. All right. Let's later. call it a wrap.